Hello, we are Sublime Stone, the team of science students that forms the 2023 Master IGEM team. The aim of our project this year is to restore limestone cracks using genetic engineering. For this reason, we are excited to collaborate with SROL, the Conservation Institute of Maastricht. We did this by conducting an interview with one of their professionals. She gave us insight into the world of restoration and conservation and her input and opinion on our project. Stay with us to learn more about conservation, limestone, and of course, about our project. My name is Kate Seymour. I am British, uh, but I've been living here in the Netherlands for almost 25 years. I'm a art historian who trained as a painting conservator and became fascinated with um, chemistry, physics, mechanics, and um, I love that aspect of my work, that it's multifaceted and I can do many, many different things. Um, so I, I trained as a painting conservator, but about 15 years ago I started teaching conservation practice to uh, young conservators and I work at the University of Amsterdam on their course training conservators, um, but I also work at uh, Maastricht University as a guest and um, teach young scientists a little bit about art and about how art is also full of chemistry, physics and mechanics. What is SRL? That's a good question, I was about to say. So, SRAL is, uh, stands for the Stichting Restauratie Atelier Limburg, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful in Dutch. It was founded in the 1980s as a regional conservation lab um, with expertise to treat painted surfaces. Um, so wall paintings, easel paintings and polychrome sculpture. And from 1990, they started the only postgraduate painting restoration course in the Netherlands. But as a regional conservation lab, we don't just work regionally, we work also nationally and internationally. And we have departments in easel painting, so paintings on canvas or wooden support, like the one we have here, um, polychrome sculpture. Um, historic interiors, that's the whole context of the interior that's painted, um, modern contemporary art, and we also do a um, technique called gilt leather. So our expertise is really quite strong in Dutch um, 17th century paintings, but we can deal with a lot of other artworks like the Spanish panels that you see behind me, mm -hmm. uh, which are from the 15th century. What are the unique characteristics of limestone and if it requires any specific conservation techniques? It's a calcium, um, carbonate, calcium sulfate based uh, material, um, depending on where it's um, produced in the Earth's crust. And here in Maastricht we have the quarries from Merkelstein, which is a sort of limestone. Uh, but there's also a blue limestone from Belgium, which is much harder um, and that means coming back to your question, that um, there is not one standard um, characteristic that these kinds of mm. stones have. So some of them are much more porous than others, and some of them are therefore more crumbly than others. Um, so it's a challenge to figure out what exactly you want to, uh, to do. Mm -hmm. Um, some limestones are coloured, some are more white, so again, um, they're often used for different purposes. The importance of limestone in Maastricht? I have been living in the Netherlands for quite some time, and when um, colleagues come down from the north, they are very surprised because in Maastricht the building technique is very different. Um, so in the, the north, um, they built with um, um, clay stones, so red bricks, and they are locally produced, and the houses are built all with these red bricks. Whereas here in Maastricht and Limber, uh, a lot of the building materials are the stones from the quarry here locally. Mm -hmm. um, and also from Belgium, which were shipped up the river um, and used uh, here. So, for instance, the town hall has two different types of um, limestone in its construction. And you'll see in many of the Limburg houses that the yellow sandstone is interspaced in, in the building architecture there. So, I think limestone and Maastricht go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and it's one of the biggest tourist attractions are the quarries, 
and um, or the caves, as they call them here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a very important aspect of local life. What are common issues faced when you are trying to conserve limestone? Well, I think you've got to look at the purpose and where that object has been housed. So mm -hmm. if it's a sculpture that's intended for indoor use, then often the degradation of that material is going to be very different than if it's an outdoor sculpture or even a building, because um, limestone mm -hmm. is a very good building material. So for instance, the quarries here, I don't know if you've been on one of the tours, yeah. and yeah. they explain to you how they cut the stone out of the quarry, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a very good material to build with until it comes out of the quarry and it needs a little calcification aspect where it hardens mm. in the daylight and the, the mm -hmm. moisture as the moisture removed from it um, and that makes it much more stable and stronger to be able to build with so also with materiality if it's a harder stone it's going to be more difficult to carve in terms of conservation it's going to be a little bit the same if it's a very powdery surface you're going to need to do different things than if you're cleaning a very solid um, smooth surface. So the current uh, technologies I think uh, for treating limestone is dependent also on the function that you want to do. So are you cleaning or are you consolidating? Um, cleaning is a term that we use for removing non-original materials and with stone materials, especially those that are outside, that can be kind of problematic and ethically challenging because they're often a crust that grows out of the original material. If you're using a consolidant because you have something that is crumbling, then if the consolidant is a, an adhesive that cures into a film and that needs to um, solidify, so it needs to penetrate into the layer. So again, there's challenges there to think about how, what kind of material, what kind of flow properties it has, what kind of bonding properties it has to the surface that is there, mm -hmm. and, and that's going to interact. So um, modern technologies for cleaning have um, evolved away from mechanical cleaning with scalpels to solvent-based systems, but even to lasers. Yeah, so the um, laser cleaning has um, recently showed that sometimes with the thermal um, impact that is there that they can yellow the surfaces. So um, they are looking for different techniques. Sometimes the materiality shifts that technique or understanding the problems that are there. Other times it's legal aspects. So today, especially with outdoor cleaning processes, um, there's uh, tighter laws about bullets and the um, legal legislation at the moment um, prohibits um, the distribution of lead particles in the air. Hmm. So often cleaning is now done with different techniques and using gel plasters to compress materials away from the surface. Yeah, so synthetic biology is quite a new field, I would say, in conservation. Conservation uses organic materials a lot. Um, the biological materials are often not intended to be there and outdoor uh, you have algae growing you've got um, um, bacteria growing mold and so on and those are unwanted but it's kind of interesting to see that um, new consolidants for wood and for stone have been on the basis of sugars and block polymers that can be constructed to fill up and to strengthen um, substrates like wood and stone so um, I think that uh, looking at the other way around, so what can science give to art rather than what art needs from science, can be quite useful as well. And that's why I think this project is quite fascinating because you're designing something that has multiple um, functions and uh, possibilities, so not just in art. But wait, wait, before we jump in to talk about our project, what is it exactly that we're trying to do? Like I said, we want to repair limestone cracks. For this, we have designed a dual bacterial system. One set of bacteria builds a scaffold using a technology called DNA origami, which will serve as the structural base inside the crack. And the second set of bacteria generates calcite that adhere to the scaffold, therefore filling the cracks with limestone. We will achieve this through genetic engineering. 
I mean, you've got a growth pattern which is different. So the, this is why it's a different technology and a different thinking process than what we're used to doing. So what you're used to doing, if you've got two, um, two bits of stone that are broken, and then you have to bring those two edges together, mm -hmm. and if they're not fitting back together like a jigsaw puzzle, then you've got to fill up the gaps with another material. And you're doing that with your calcites, but what we normally do now is we inject a grout um, or a glue mm -hmm. in there, and that go glue or grout goes from a fluid, so it flows into position, but it has to be bulked enough that it can join the two sides of the mm -hmm. two adherents together. So if this material that you put in, and even if it takes you know, 50 years, it might be something that is quite interesting because it's going to grow to fill the gap. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to check out our social media to support our project. You can find all the links in the description. Bye!